Yeah. Can you can you expand on uh, the whole idea of hikmah that's very central uh, to the Mathuri theology? What yeah. uh, that that distinguishes, I think, to some extent, with the Ashari theology. I think that yeah. would be an important point to, to expand on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mentioned hikmah. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, it's still there in the later Maturidis, but again, this is one of the things, and I mentioned this in the book, that um, Maturidi is very strong <clears throat> with this idea of wisdom. Mm-hmm. That wisdom is a divine attribute. Later Maturidis were more likely to explain wisdom as part of God's action or part of God's knowledge, or you know, they, they don't want to keep it as this kind of independent attribute. But for Maturidi, that's very important. And um, really, um, the way he sees wisdom is, um, on the one hand, he's saying that God, uh, you know, um, knows which place to to um, put everything Mm -hmm. no to put everything in its place is wisdom right but he admits that this is just a kind of illustration of it because ultimately it's 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 a bit deeper than that it's kind of it's the kind of i mean it's the divine intent we could say that is for how things will be in the creation how things are to be you -hmm. know this idea of wisdom the divine plan, as it were, um, and this is, um, you know, it's, it's something that's in the Quran. You know, uh, uh, you know, the idea of hikmah and uh, Allah's hakim is very present in the Quran, but it's also something that was present in his environment as well, um, and maybe that partly explains his emphasis on it. Other figures of his time in that region talked about hikmah, but what's important about it for theological purposes, in my view, is it is it allows, on the one hand. An eternal grounding of God's sort of the moral aspects of God's nature, we could say. So, like mm-hmm. when God when 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 God commands something, why should that be the command and not something else? Right. The the explanation, the grounding of that is in this idea of God's wisdom. Mm-hmm. Now, the difference, for example, to the um, Mottezala is the Mottezala tend to try to ground um, God's action in a kind of goodness that is essentially considered to be external to, to, to God. It's an, a, a, a kind of a rationally understood system that, that God is held up to. And so, the so God actually, is subjected to that framework. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and this is problematic potentially from because you're placing, you know, the, 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 the issue for Sunni thinkers is that God has to have this omnipotence and complete power and control. But then how do you, um, you know, it's this classic conundrum. How do you marry that with, uh, human morality, free will, and uh, responsibility, and for the mm-hmm. Asheris, the grounding tends to be on God's sort of will. But the nature of the will is it's um, is it's essentially um, um, you might say what's the difference between will and and hikma, right? Mm-hmm. But Maturidi has will as well, right? The, the 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 will is what God in in fact chooses or does, right? Um, out of all the, the possibilities that he can create, right? That's what will yeah, in this case. Yeah. yeah. So the 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 wisdom is is something that um, you know by his own nature, what you know what he ought to do, but not based on an external constraint. Mm-hmm. But the, the 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 thing about will, as understood by it, the Asheris is it's so unknowable that really we have no access to it whatsoever, right? God could will this or will that. It's only the fact that we have a revelation telling us that God has chosen something in the you know. So therefore, it becomes very revelation dependent on trying mm-hmm. to understand ethical norms because there's nothing to be gained theologically. You can't. Uh, and in fact, the Asheris think that between Sharias, for example, God can. And Asheri says this: you, um, you could change. God could change the ruling, make something. Fundamentally wrong, fundamentally right. Mm. This wisdom that Maturidi is talking about, yes, there's a sense in which it's, you know, in a in an ultimate sense, it's, you know, it's 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 ineffable. It's beyond what we can fully comprehend. But nonetheless, he does think there's some ability for human rationality to be able to understand some of its elements. So what this allows is certain judgments, for example, that. Um, you know, God can't. Uh, it's what's famous issue, taklif uh, malay talk, that God does not burden the uh, believer beyond what the believer can take. Mm. 
-hmm. from the Ashery point of view, if God wanted to do that, that would be fine because God has got this untrammeled will. That would be God's choice. For the Materides view, they're saying that human rationality allows us to know that that would not be appropriate to the wisdom of God. And therefore, mm -hmm. absolutely God does not do this, even though he has the power, the omnipotence to you know, issue that command. It's not lack. It's not a lack of omnipotence, but he, he, his wisdom means he never will. And so yeah. there's, it, it opens up, in my view, a kind of dimension that allows a sort of theological resolution to some of the problems that you get, you know, between the, the sort of the, the famous uh, sort of Asheri and Motesali debates. Mm -hmm. There's a kind of third dimension, and I think that Al Maturidi does it best. Um, and I've tried to show this to some extent in the book. And it actually has some very profound, potentially profound implications, even on things like the divine speech, like, you know, um, this issue of like, how do we know God is telling the truth? Mm. You know, in, in God reveals to us, but how do we know he tells the truth? It seems to, from, from as far as I can tell, it seems hard from the Ashery framework to be able to really justify how we know God is truthful, although we feel that we should be able to know that. And we can't can know that. Just from, and we can't know that just from what the Quran tells us because that's circular. We have to have a rational knowledge of that because if it's just from what's in the Quran, but then how do we know that that statement in the Quran is is truthful? So you need something rational, and the Mu'tazili give it, but at too high cost for other issues. And so this is the arguably the place that Maturidi theology can come in with an interesting angle to uh, uh, present that issue. And I've done a bit of that in the book. Uh, I have a chapter. On divine speech and in the in that chapter I go into this debate and I try to show where I think that uh, the Maturidi doctrine of Hikmah which isn't I mean I've got a chapter on Hikmah as well but the, where it, it can actually benefit with other attributes as well not just with its own uh, discussion well, right. so just yeah. <clears throat>